Is GPU VRAM really important? It's a question I see a lot, so in this video we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the It's Not Rocket Science series, we've been helping you troubleshoot and optimize your system to keep your PC running like a pro. It's Not Rocket Science, and as you'll see throughout this series, it really is Lego. In this video, our focus will be on helping you buy the right GPU by answering two important questions. One, is the amount of VRAM important? And two, how much VRAM do you really need? In addition to showing you benchmarks across eight popular games, I'm also going to demystify upscaling and frame generation technologies and let you know when you should consider using them, something you will definitely not want to miss. It's really not rocket science, so before we jump into the benchmarks, let's first review how to measure the impact of VRAM in games. The best way to measure the impact of VRAM on gaming performance is to compare identical GPUs with different amounts of RAM. Fortunately, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti is offered in two variants, one with 8GB and one with 16GB of VRAM, so it's a perfect GPU to conduct these tests with. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD AM5 open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D. For the motherboard, we have an ASUS ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. For RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB of DDR5 8000 at CL38. For the first GPU, we have an ASUS Dual GeForce RTX 4060 Ti OC Edition 8GB. For the second GPU, we have an ASUS Dual GeForce RTX 4060 Ti Advanced Edition 16GB. For the CPU cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Ryo 3 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 4TB Samsung 990 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Corsair HX1200i Platinum 1200W power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the RTX 4060 Ti 8GB GPU at default clocks. However, to ensure a fair comparison, I set the boost clock for the 16GB version equal to the 8GB card, which is about 15MHz higher than its default boost clock. I also applied a number of performance enhancing tweaks to the 9800X3D, which can be found in my How to Tweak an AMD AM5 Ryzen CPU step-by-step -step guide video, and I tuned my kit of DDR5 8000 CL38 to CL3446-3840 with the exact settings that I use found in my membership area. In order to thoroughly test the GPUs, I ran the benchmarks at ultra settings at resolutions of 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. With the GPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. As you can see from the benchmarks, the amount of VRAM has a significant impact on performance, with the importance increasing with resolution, or as the load on the GPU increases. If we dig a little deeper, it becomes clear that this performance impact only exists when a game requires more than what is available, which makes sense. If a game does require more than the maximum VRAM that you have on your card, the impact will be large, as shown by the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 results, where the increase is around 100% at all resolutions. However, if the VRAM VRAM is sufficient, then clearly there will be no impact on performance, as shown by the Total War Warhammer 3 results, where the required VRAM stays within the 8GB limit. That said, additional VRAM can only do so much in games. If you look at the results for Call of Duty Black Ops 6, it's clear that the GPU itself starts to struggle as the resolution increases. As the load on the GPU goes up, the relative performance advantage for the 16GB card drops, even though the 16GB card has sufficient VRAM. This is because the actual GPU is incapable 
capable of providing the compute performance required from the game at these settings. So it's extremely important when buying a graphics card to consider a balanced GPU and VRAM combination, otherwise the additional VRAM will be wasted. So if you don't have enough VRAM, what can you do about it? Unlike system RAM, the one thing you can't do with the GPU is add more VRAM since it's soldered onto the board. You could lower your graphics settings, but to most gamers that's not a great solution because it directly impacts the enjoyment of the game. So what can you do? The good news is that there is a way to significantly improve your FPS without lowering your graphics settings, but only if you're willing to embrace AI-driven upscaling technologies such as DLSS, FSR, or XESS. Nvidia introduced AI-driven upscaling technology, which they call Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, as a key feature of the GeForce 20 series cards in September 2018. AMD followed a few years later with the introduction of Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR, while Intel followed soon after with their own upscaling technology called XE Super Sampling or XESS. For the purpose of explaining how the technology works, I'm going to focus on DLSS, since it's arguably the most mature of the three technologies. DLSS is a suite of AI-driven image enhancement and upscaling technologies or algorithms that allow higher resolution graphics to be generated from lower resolution images. It's a type of video rendering technique that boosts frame rates by rendering frames at lower resolution than displayed and using deep learning or AI to upscale the frames so that they look like they should at the native resolution. It relies on dedicated hardware together with AI to do this in real time. For example, with DLSS on, a game's frames could be rendered at 1080p resolution and then upscaled and output at 4K resolution, allowing frame rates consistent with 1080p but delivering sharper images that look similar to 4K. You can see the performance impact of doing this in Cyberpunk 2077, where switching to performance mode had a significant impact on the frame rates, especially at lower resolutions where the GPU itself is computationally powerful enough to push additional frames. Frame generation is a feature within the DLSS suite that creates new frames based on existing frames generated by the game engine. It was first introduced by Nvidia in 2022 with the launch of their RTX 40 series GPUs. The simplest way to explain frame generation is that it's an AI driven form of interpolation. So put simply, it will create an entirely new frame between two game engine rendered frames, which means that it will be the average of these two frames. You might hear people call these new frames fake, but that's not accurate since the technology relies on the frames rendered from the game engine. It can't create or remove objects. Given that you can only use this technology with upscaling or DLSS turned on, if the frames rendered with DLSS look bad, so will the AI generated frame. The advantage of using frame gen is that your game will appear smoother, your frame rate will increase, and the new frame is inherently accurate. The disadvantage is that you need to wait for a future frame to be generated before displaying the new frame, which creates a lag and increases latency. To help solve this issue, Nvidia recently introduced multi-frame generation with the launch of the RTX 50 series GPUs. DLSS multi-frame generation generates up to three additional frames per traditionally rendered frame. The simplest way to explain the new multi-frame generation is that it's an AI-driven form of extrapolation. So this means that the algorithm will create entirely new frames from one game engine rendered frame essentially predicting the future. I think it's more accurate to call these new frames fake, given that they are predictions. However, they are based on real rendered frames from the game engine. So as long as the time increment is small enough, then it's extremely unlikely that something fake will appear on screen. The advantage of this approach is that you don't have to wait for a future frame to be rendered to generate the new frame, so the impact on latency is minimal. The downside is that you're predicting a future frame, so for a dynamic environment where a lot of objects are moving and changing direction rapidly, there is a greater possibility of visual glitches appearing on screen. According to Nvidia, this new frame generation AI model is 40% faster and uses 30% less VRAM, which is impressive if true. To see the impact of these technologies on performance, let's look at the worst performing game for the the RTX 4060 Ti 8GB card, which is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. As you can clearly see, at ultra settings, this game requires more than 8GB of VRAM to run effectively at all resolutions. In fact, at 4K, the average FPS for the 8GB card is only 9 FPS, whereas for the 16GB variant, the FPS increases by around 120% to 20 FPS. Still not a playable frame rate, but definitely much better. To see if it's possible to boost the performance of a card that clearly doesn't have enough 
enough VRAM, let's take the 8GB variant and turn on upscaling or DLSS. Due to the relatively poor computational performance of the GPU itself at these settings, I chose the Ultra Performance option, which essentially renders at 33.3% of the target display resolution. You sacrifice image quality doing this, but for a card that's clearly not designed to game at 4K, it's the best option. If you now take a look at the benchmark results again, the answer is a resounding yes. The increase in performance is significant, with an increase of over 200% for average FPS at 4K and approximately 100% for the 1% lows. That puts the average FPS around 30 frames per second, which is what I would consider the bare minimum for an acceptable single player game experience. This also had no meaningful impact on VRAM usage, which is interesting. If you now add frame generation as well, the frame rates improve even more, especially especially at lower resolutions, making the game very playable at 1080p, but still not great at 4K, which apparently still requires additional VRAM, even with these technologies enabled. So how much VRAM do you really need? That depends on the display resolution, the image quality or game settings, and the rendering approach used, such as rasterization or ray tracing. Ray tracing simulates how light behaves in the real world. It's a rendering technique that can realistically simulate the lighting of a scene and its objects by rendering physically accurate reflections, refractions, shadows, and indirect lighting. It is incredibly taxing on your hardware because tracing every path that light can take in every frame requires a large amount of computation. Another way to think of ray tracing is to look around you. The objects you're seeing are illuminated by beams of light. Now turn that around and follow the path of those beams backwards from your eye to the objects that the light interacts with. That's ray tracing. There are two other related rendering techniques that should also be discussed because they're important to understand. The first, mentioned earlier, is rasterization, which is a technique used to display three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional screen, and it's the primary graphics technique used today in game engines. While rasterization is still computationally intensive, it is much less so compared to ray tracing. That's why when you turn any ray tracing on in games, the FPS drops. The second is path tracing, which is an even more intensive form of ray tracing that traces thousands of rays through each pixel and follows the rays through numerous bounces off or through objects before reaching the light source in order to collect color and lighting information. Path tracing taxes even the best GPUs today, which can be seen by looking at the benchmark results for Cyberpunk 2077. As you can see, with path tracing enabled, there is a significant reduction in performance compared with ray tracing. Newer rendering technologies such as ray tracing and path tracing increase VRAM usage over traditional rasterization techniques. So as more games embrace this approach to generating 3D graphics, you would naturally expect VRAM needs to go up. However, according to Nvidia, newer AI-driven rendering technologies will help reduce VRAM needs. During CES, I asked Nvidia about the impact of DLSS4 on VRAM requirements, and here is what they had to say. Yeah, so uh, there's kind of a two, two prong approach of how we're gonna reduce VRAM requirements using DLSS4. So the first is when you activate super resolution, because you're rendering at a 1080p frame and upscaling to 4K, uh, particularly in the performance mode, you save you know, the VRAM requirements of holding 4K uh, textures in memory, um, anything like that. And then um, another improvement that we're bringing to DLSS4, which will also come to the 4 series, is the base FG model is being improved. Um, we're, what we're doing is we have found an AI model that can replace the optical flow accelerator state, or step, excuse me. And by doing that, um, that FG model actually uses uh, I want to say about 20% reduced VRAM footprint over our base model. Okay. Um, and then, you know, addressing people might have concerns that you know each of those generated frames that you're producing on top of the original that must have you know some sort of VRAM requirement. And the good thing is, is just activating the model itself is what uses the most VRAM. Those additional frames that we're generating almost have no footprint both in VRAM requirement and latency. So how much VRAM do you really need? The highest VRAM usage that I saw when benchmarking these eight games at ultra settings was 13.4 gigabytes in Call of Duty Black Ops 6 with upscaling turned off. If however you look at all of the other games, VRAM usage doesn't go beyond about 12 gigabytes. With that in mind, if you want to play at max settings in 2025, I would recommend buying a GPU with at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM. 
That said, if you do buy a card with less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM and you want a game at high settings regardless of resolution, then you'll need to embrace AI upscaling technologies. You won't need to use frame generation, but you will need to use DLSS, FSR or XESS to achieve playable frame rates. In this video, we tackled the question of whether VRAM is actually important for gaming performance. As you can clearly see from the benchmark results, it is. But much like system RAM, it's only an issue when you don't have enough. So how much is enough? Based on the data and the advancements in AI-driven rendering techniques, I would recommend a minimum VRAM requirement of 12 gigabytes in 2025. This should allow you to run most current games at 4K ultra settings without issue. However, this is still a secondary consideration when compared with actual GPU performance. If your GPU is not computationally powerful enough to drive performance at a given resolution and image quality, then having enough VRAM simply won't matter. This is typically the dilemma that faces most GPU buyers. Should you get the card that performs better in games or the card with more VRAM? The answer is always, it depends. But if the cost is the same, then I would typically side with getting a more powerful GPU. You can use upscaling and frame gen to help you overcome a lack of VRAM, but there's nothing you can do if your GPU is simply not powerful enough. One last issue that I think is worth talking about more before wrapping up this video is the notion of fake versus real frames. These are games, they're not real. So when someone complains about a frame being fake, it doesn't really make sense. All we are really talking about is the difference between a frame being rendered by the game engine directly versus a frame being rendered by an algorithm that was trained from the game engine. If you can't tell the difference between the end product, then why should it matter? In fact, when I was at CES comparing Black Myth Wukong running side by side with no upscaling on the left versus DLSS 4 on the right, I genuinely thought that the DLSS 4 image quality looked better. So if that's how good this technology has become, then why should I care what the source of the frame is? And this brings me to the real problem. Reviewers without any technical understanding of AI or how it works, trying to push back against a technology that they're scared of and don't understand. The issue to me isn't fake frames, it's fake reviewers being exposed for their lack of technical knowledge. I don't think Nvidia did themselves a service by claiming that a 5070 could match the performance of a 4090, but the image quality improvements that they've made with DLSS 4 are impressive and are only going to get better. Fake or real, as a gamer, I don't really care as long as I can't tell the difference. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the It's Not Rocket Science how-to series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you'd like to support the channel further and gain access to some really great perks, please also consider joining our membership program. Bye for now.